Hi everyone! I know it's been a long time but here we are again for another vlog. Um, today I will be talking about Athena application process so we can remove the Google Drive video attachment for when you try and apply here in Athena. For those who are new here in my channel, my name is MJ. I am an owner of a wedding events planning business called MJ Weddings and Events. And I am also a full-time virtual executive assistant for Athena Executive Assistant. My channel is all about helping you to become a successful virtual executive assistant, whether here in Athena or when you want to get direct clients. So my channel is all about doing tutorials, teaching you the tools, showing you how to do travel management, inbox management, and all of the skills that we need to become successful virtual executive assistants. So if you like to learn more about that topic, please subscribe to my channel and then hit that notification button so you will get notified for when I upload new videos. I promise you I will start uploading more frequently. It has been a crazy, crazy few months um, with all of the work that I have been doing, with all of the weddings that I have been planning. But yes, we will start uploading more frequently. You can also follow me in all of my social media accounts, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook page, LinkedIn. I will post all of my handles and links in the caption of this video. Prior to this video, all of the people who have been reaching out to me and asking how to apply in Athena have been watching a video through my Google Drive. So I am going to remove that video already and direct you to this YouTube video. So please keep watching. Before we go to the details of the application process in Athena, let me just give you a little bit of background of what is Athena Executive Assistant. So Athena Executive Assistant is a delegation industry. They want to pioneer in the delegation industry and they are hiring and training Filipinos living here in the Philippines to become virtual executive assistants. Their clients or their pool of clients are located all in the US or in the United States. And there are a lot of clients who are currently in the waitlist and that is why Athena is currently ramping and trying to hire a lot of executive assistants, specifically Filipino executive assistants. The mission of Athena is to reach 10,000 employees or 10,000 virtual executive assistants by the year 2030. So what are the qualifications if you want to apply here in Athena? You should be 18 years old and above. You should be residing here in the Philippines. Filipinos who are currently out of the country cannot unfortunately apply for this position yet. If you decide to come home, you are definitely very much welcome to apply. You must have your own equipment, whether it be PC or laptop. Later on in the video, I will be discussing the required specs for your PC and laptop. You must also have your own internet, whether it be a wired internet or Wi-Fi, as long as it reaches 10 Mbps speed. Our virtual executive assistant position is only open for full-timers. We do not offer part-time work here in Athena Executive Assistant. So you must be willing to work the full-time and also must be willing to work in the graveyard shift. Since our clients are mostly in the US, our working hours will be following their time zone. Athena Executive Assistant also do not require a specific educational background. As long as you are 18 years old and above, you can definitely apply. Whether you're a college graduate, an undergraduate, a high school graduate or not, as long as you are 18 years old and above, you can apply. You can also apply whether you have work experience or no work experience. If you are fresh grad or a fresh undergraduate, as long again as you are 18 years old living here in the Philippines, you can apply. But please take note, work experience doesn't mean that you have zero knowledge about the position or about how to become a virtual executive assistant. Always please do your research of what a virtual executive assistant is before you start applying. 
where do you start your research or for example if you really don't have any work experience or work background the best way to start before you apply or the best thing that you can do is to learn Google Workspace. What is in Google Workspace? You have Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive. Within Google Drive, you have Google Sheets, Docs, Slides, Forms, and all of the other features within Google Drive or Google Workspace. Take note that Google Workspace is for free. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to create your own Gmail account or your Google account and you can start practicing. You can definitely start by watching the previous videos that I have here on my channel. I uploaded three videos on Google Calendar tutorial. You can start from there. I will be uploading Gmail and Google Drive tutorials in the next coming weeks. And last but definitely not the least, you should have a high quality, good English communication skills, spoken and written. Your English doesn't have to be perfect. English is not our native tongue, but as long as you can deliver everything properly, you can deliver words properly, your English is conversational, you can definitely apply. Stay up until the end of this video as I will be discussing to you the benefits of working as an Athena Executive Assistant. So before I walk you through the whole Athena application process, let me just discuss the steps of the application process in Athena. We have five steps on the application process. The first one is filling up the application form. The second is answering the initial assessment. It's a 76 item multiple choice assessment that has a little bit of math, a mix of math and grammar. Next is answering the inbox management playbook. Playbook means it's an online module that you have to read first, understand, and then answer the assessment after. Next step is your final interview. So you only have one interview here in Athena. So it's either through Zoom or Google Meet. And once you pass the final interview stage, you will be invited to the job offer and head on to training. For now, let's check out my screen and I am going to walk you through the whole Athena application process. I want to discuss here would be the requirements for your PC and laptop specs. Now, here you can see this information. First, the RAM or minimum RAM will be 8 gig. However, of course, 16 gig will be recommended. For laptops, it should be 8th generation or 8000 series, Core i5 or better, AMD Ryzen series processors. For desktop, it should be Ryzen 5 3000 series and above. If Core i3, it should be 10th generation or higher. For Mac users, your PC or laptop should be Core i5, year 2017 or higher or Core i7 2016 or higher. We do not recommend MacBooks for Core i3 below. That's the requirement for our PC specs and laptop. So here are the first steps that you should take when you want to apply in Athena Executive Assistance. All you have to do is go to any of my social media accounts. You can go to my Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook page or Facebook group. All the links will be in the link in my bio. Once you click that link, you will see this page right here. You're going to see a mobile version of this as well if you're using your phone. But I do highly suggest to either use your laptop or your PC when you're filling out or when you're going through the application process in Athena. What you're going to do is you're going to click this second button which says apply here at Athena. Once you click that, you will be directed to this blog or website that I did for your application. I do have some tips here that you can use. All the process are here and then you can go through all of the details. I just need to update all of these other information. But once you have read everything, you can click the link in here that says click here to apply and it will be or it will direct you to this application form. 
So let's go through the application form together. The first one that you need to do is put on your name. So it has to be your first name, your middle name, and your last name. Next is a very important, this is a very important step in putting your email. Make sure that when you input your email, it should all be correct spelling. Make sure to triple check this email. If not, you're not going to receive any emails from Athena all throughout the application process. If you do not have a Gmail, let's say you do have a Yahoo Mail, I highly suggest to already let go of your Yahoo Mail and create a new Gmail account because the it will be easier for you to use Gmail compared to Yahoo. Next is to input your phone number. Make sure that you put plus 63 and then your phone number. Next step is to install or upload your resume. Um, I do highly suggest to use a PDF format so that it won't be editable. But if not, of course, you can use your Word format resume. Make sure that it should be smaller than 3 MB. If in any case you are not able to upload your resume in this application form, that's fine. You can still submit this application form without your resume. Just take note that once you have completed this application form and hit the submit button to email your resume to recruitment at athenago.com and just say in the email that you were not you were unable to attach the resume and here is your resume for their review next step is to indicate the application source if you use the links in my bio you don't have to edit this anymore that's already automatic next is make sure to choose you are currently residing in the philippines if you are not residing in the Philippines and you click no, that's an autofail version or that is already an autofail, which means that you will not be proceeding to the next step because as per our qualifications, you should be residing here in the Philippines. Next is, are you at least 18 years of age? You should also be clicking yes on this. If not, if you click on no, you will not proceed to the next step because this is also a non-negotiable qualification. You should be 18 years old and above to be able to apply. Next, another one is, are you willing to work from home during the night shift? Make sure to also write yes on this because if you hit no, it's also an autofail because this is also a non-negotiable qualification. You should be willing to work in the night shift full time, which is 40 hours a week to be able to apply or to qualify in Athena. So that that takes me to the next question, which is, are you able to work 40 hours a week? This should also be a yes because we don't offer part-time so if you hit no on this you will not be able to proceed to the next step because this is also another non-negotiable qualification next one is do you have more than one year of accumulated work experience you can either hit yes or no in this one if you don't have any work experience since we are accepting people who do not have any work experience to apply Take note, if you are a college graduate without any work experience, you can hit yes on this if you did an on-the-job training because um, I believe that that is already an equivalent to a work experience. Next would be hitting your task experiences here. So which of the following tasks have you had experience with? So you can select all of this or you can select just one. For calendar management, if you know how to use Google Calendar or your phone calendar and you know how to create events or setting appointments, you can click calendar management. Even if you're doing this just for your personal or you're doing calendar management for your personal use, you can click on calendar management. Inbox management, if you are already familiar with writing emails, whether it be personal emails or work emails, you can click on inbox management. 
Next would be travel management. If you already know or you have experience in booking your own plane tickets, booking hotels and restaurants for you, for a family member or for your boss or your executive, you can click on travel management. Making outbound calls, reservation, reservations, purchasing, and inquiring. If you already know how to, let's say, call Globe and ask anything about your plan, or you called PLDT, or you called any customer service related type of um, of inquiries, you can already include this as one of your task experience. Next would be data management. It includes data entry, spreadsheet management. If you know how to use Excel file or if you know how to use Google Sheets, you can include this as your task experience. Next would be social media management. If, and that includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn as well, or YouTube. If you do have experience in managing your own YouTube page, your own YouTube channel, your own Facebook page, let's say you have an online business, or you also have your own Instagram account and you know how to manage your own social media accounts. Or if, for example, you did manage someone else's social media, you can definitely hit that check button there and include it in your task experience. For project management, if you know how to use Asana, Trello, Notion, or other project management tools, you can check this one out. If you don't, that's okay. Um, you don't have to include it. You can also check that if all of this, you don't have any experience, you can check non-applicable. But I am not quite sure if you choose this, if it's going to be an auto-fail since we do still require for you to have basic knowledge of Google, Google Calendar and Gmail. And lastly, if you do have experiences with apps such as Excel, OneDrive, Teams, Outlook, etc., and also multimedia like Photoshop, Canva, and engineering tools such as AutoCAD, ProConnect, you can definitely check this box. The next box would be apps and tool experiences. If in any chance there are tools or application that you know how to use that wasn't included in any of this above you can definitely include it here if you know how to use pixart etc you can definitely include it here um, in the app and tool experience the next set of questions or yeah the next set of questions in the application form are three questions that you would be required that requires you to write uh, five to ten sentences the questions would be under relationships interests and flexibility the first one about relationship says Athena values building long-term relationship with its clients. How do you ensure you build long-term relationship with others? As an EA, how do you think you will be able to build a long-term relationship with your customer? To please answer in five to 10 sentences, failure to comply may result to disqualification. So make sure that you answer within five to 10 sentences. So this talks about basically what your long-term goal is so as it says here how do you think you will be able to build a long-term relationship with your customer and how do you ensure you build long-term relationship with others so this should show your maybe where you see yourself five years from now and where you are at with your customer or with your client so make sure that you cite examples like I see myself being um, helping my client with his or her business as an EA. So uh, this just is looking at what your dreams are or your goals as uh, goal goals are in the next few years as an executive assistant in Athena. The next essay question is under interest. It says here that an Athena EA does their best to go the extra mile. Your new client is trying to see if you can play a supportive role in planning their wedding. Please write them an email describing how you feel about helping. Again, answer in 5 to 10 sentences. 
if you have experience in planning your own wedding or you have experience in being a maid of honor or a bridesmaid or even just an attendee in a wedding, you can definitely include here all the things that you can help your client with from planning the budget, reaching out to suppliers, etc. So just take note also that it says here that please write them an email. So make sure that when you answer this, eh, I highly advise that you answer this through an email format um, answer. Lastly, on our essay portion would be flexibility. And Athena EA recognizes the need to be flexible in solving day-to-day -day problems. Describe a situation where you had to adapt to change. How did you handle it? How did you help others through the transition? Again, answer in five to ten sentences. So for this questions, we just want to gauge how you adapt to change. So make sure that you write down specific scenarios wherein you had to adapt to change, like maybe when you finished college, how did you transition from being a student to being an employee, something like that. Anything that will show that you can easily adapt to change. Once you're done with the essays we go to the last few questions so it says here are you able when are you able to start working in athena so you can say anytime or you can also choose other um it just really depends if you're still currently working then maybe you can choose other or i highly suggest that if you let's say decide to render your resignation as soon as you receive the job offer in Athena, you can definitely choose also anytime. If this is a reapplication for you, let's say you already applied before, make sure that you choose yes, I am reapplying. But if this is going to be your first time applying in Athena, just choose no, this is my first time applying. Lastly, just sign off on here that you validate the 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 and all of the information that you input above is true and correct and click on I'm not a robot and hit on save. I have been receiving feedback about the CAPTCHA errors sometimes that it won't make them proceed. If in any way that happens to you as well, just make sure to clear cache on your Google Chrome. Or if you're using a different browser, stop using that browser and move on to Google Chrome. Just copy and paste your answers and then you can definitely hit save on that. Once you're done with the application form, just hit on save and wait for the email for the next step. So that's the first step of applying for Athena. Once you submit the application, make sure to check the spam folder of your inbox because sometimes the email from recruitment is directed in the spam folder. It takes about 24 to 48 hours to receive a reply, but based on feedback from applicants, after submitting their application form, they immediately receive the next step or email from recruitment to take the next step just a few seconds after submission of the application form. So the next step is to answer the initial assessment. It is a 76 item multiple choice assessment. It consists of math and grammar. You don't have to be afraid about the math portion of the assessment because it's not like we're doing algebra, math, that sort of, um, or that kind of math. The math that we are answering is an analytical type of math questions. Samples of their math question is, Mia invested 1,000 pesos for this business. Ariel also invested 3,000 pesos in this business. And finally, Athena invested 5,000 pesos in this business. After five years in the business, their profit is 500,000 pesos. Based on their shares, what percentage would Athena be getting out of the profit? So those are 
So that's one sample of the type of math questions that you're going to answer in the initial assessment. For the grammar part, it's just your basic vocabulary, what to use, are you going to use past tense in this one, fill in the blanks, just very, very simple grammar questions that I'm sure you can definitely answer correctly. The grammar portion might look easy in this initial assessment, but there are a lot of applicants who score higher in math compared to grammar. So take your time when answering the initial assessment. The deadline for the initial assessment is 48 hours from the time you receive the email. It's not 60 minutes as what is said in the email. The 60 minutes is just giving you or letting you know that the average time to finish it is um, within 60 minutes, but you do have 48 hours to complete the initial assessment. Make sure that you take your time make sure that you review all of your answers. The tip that I can definitely give you on answering the initial assessment is to Google the formula when you're answering math questions. Remember, do not Google the answers themselves or copy and paste the question on Google because we have tried that and Google has been giving us a lot of incorrect answers. So make sure that you do your research and research on the formula and not copy and paste the questions to get the answers. For the grammar questions, the best tip that I can give you is to use Grammarly. And if you are not familiar with the word, if you don't know if it's synonym or if it's an antonym, as long as you're not familiar, or even if you're familiar with the words, make sure to also double check it through Google. You can definitely use Google in checking the meaning of the word. Just use all of the resources that you have um, in your hands or in your computer. Another tip is you can also definitely ask help from someone. I'm not good in math. I'm very bad in math. But my husband is. He's a computer engineer. So when I was taking the assessment a year ago, I did ask help from my husband. I asked him to double check my answers. And you can ask help from family and friends who you know are very good in math and in grammar. Once you're done reviewing all of your answers, you can submit your initial assessment and you have to wait 24 to 48 hours to find out whether you passed the initial assessment or not. If you pass the initial assessment, you, re you will receive another link to answer the inbox management playbook. The Inbox Management Playbook is an online module that you have to read first before you start answering the assessment. Inbox Management Playbook has two parts. You have 2.1 and 2.2. When answering both 2.1 and 2.2, make sure that you read the modules carefully. Make sure that you read the instructions carefully. You are also going to input your email in the online module because you are going to receive sample emails or mock emails. So make sure that you will input your correct email email because if you don't, you won't be able to receive the mock emails that you would need to be able to answer the assessments for 2.1 and 2.2. Now, for the fun part, here are my tips when answering the inbox management playbook. Let's begin with 2.1 assessment. As I mentioned earlier, you will input your email and you will receive mock emails or sample emails in your personal email. Make sure to read all of the emails carefully. When I say you read everything carefully, even if you think that it's not important, everything that you will receive or everything that you will read in the module and in the emails are all important. Also, double check your spam folders because sometimes the mock emails will be directed to your spam folders. If for the instance that you really did not receive any emails, please go back to the email from recruitment. And I know you are going to see a link to a Google Drive. It's either in the email or it's in the module itself. So just make sure to read everything. Um, you will have access to a Google Drive that will include screenshots or photos of the mock emails that you should have received. Now that you receive the emails, you will start 
answering the assessment. The only tip that I have for you is to read everything carefully. There is no other tip that I can give you for 2.1 without giving you the answers or giving the answers away. But the best thing that I can give you is to read everything carefully because all of the answers are there. The answers are in the mock emails and in the online module itself. Moving on to tip for 2.2 or part 2.2 in the inbox management playbook. Just like in 2.1, you are going to receive a new set of mock emails or sample emails. Make sure to double check your spam folders because there are some instances wherein it will be directed to your spam folders. 2.1 emails are totally different from 2.2 emails. So once you're done with 2.1, please already forget the mock emails that you received in 2.1 and just focus on the mock emails that you are going to receive for 2.2. Same goes for 2.1. If you did not receive any mock emails, just double check again the Google Drive. It might be in the email you received from recruitment and or it, it's going to be within the online module that you have read. Now, in 2.2, there is a voice recording that you need to listen to. I'm not going to tell you where it is. It's up to you to find where it is as long as you follow the instructions, as long as you read 2.2 from page 1 up until the last page, you are going to find the voice message. Without that voice message, you won't be able to correctly answer the inbox management playbook. Okay, so make sure that you have your mock emails and your voice message because they go hand in hand. You have to listen to the voice message while reading the mock emails so you can find the correct answer. Another tip that I can give you for you to be able to decipher the voice message, the voice message is downloadable. You can download it to your PC and then you can use other websites such as author.ai to transcribe the voice message. But take note, the author.ai is not a perfect transcription tool. So you have to make sure that you read everything carefully in the voice message uh, while reading the transcription because some words might be incorrect, some words might be, or some fra phrases might be incorrect. So you have to still double check. Don't rely highly on the transcription of author AI because sometimes it's incorrect. Another tip that I can give you for 2.2 is if you don't know a word or if you're not familiar with a phrase, use all of the resources that you have. Google the meaning of the word, Google the meaning of the phrase, Google everything that you don't understand. Any word that you don't understand, just look for it and try to understand what it means so you can answer the assessment correctly. But take note, you're not going to find the answers for 2.2 in Google, okay? You will just use Google as one of the tools that you can use to help you understand what the word is, what the phrase is. But Google, you won't find the answers in Google. You're going to find the answers, everything in the mock emails and in the voice recording. And lastly, and this is very important, my last tip for you is to do not rush things. Make sure to take your time. Same as the initial assessment, you have 48 hours from the time that you received the email to complete the inbox management playbook. Before you submit your inbox management playbook answer sheet, make sure to double check everything. Listen again to the voice recording read through the emails one more time and then once you're confident with your answers you can submit your inbox management playbook answer sheet once you're done submitting you are again going to wait between 24 to 48 hours to receive the results whether you passed or not in the inbox management playbook if you pass the inbox management playbook you will proceed to the next step which is the final interview Again, double check your spam folders because the next step might be sent to your spam folders. What will happen in the final interview is you're going to choose a time and date that the interviewer is available through Calendly. If you're not familiar with Calendly, you can start researching what Calendly is, but it's just an appointment setting type of tool wherein you can schedule um, the time that's available for the final interview. 
if, for example, you open the Calendly and there are no available slots in the Calendly website, please go back to Calendly after a few hours or go back to Calendly the next day at around 8 in the morning and new slots will be open. If in the rare instance that there really is no slot available, please email recruitment at athenago.com and tell them that there are no slots available so they can provide you with the slot for your final interview. Now here are my final interview tips that you need to take note of before you proceed or before you head off to your final interview. First tip is always make sure that you are 15 minutes early in the Zoom or in the Google Meet room. Just stay in there even if the host is not yet there. You can start checking your internet connection. You can start checking how you look like, but just make sure that you are there 15 minutes early. While you're waiting for your interviewer, make sure to double check your background. If your background isn't as nice as this one, which is it really doesn't look like this on a regular basis. You can use virtual backgrounds to make sure that your background is presentable. You don't need to have a noise canceling headset, but if you do, that's great. But that's not a requirement. As long as you are in a quiet place, nobody can distract you in the middle of the interview, that's great. You can use a headset or an earphones, an earphone from your phone. That would be totally amazing as well. In terms of your appearance, I highly recommend for you to wear black because black is the Athena uniform. It gives the sense that you have done your research and know that wearing something black or wearing black is the Athena uniform. In a final interview, first impression really makes a, an important impact. So make sure that you look presentable. You can wear light makeup. I don't advise like heavy makeup. Light makeup is great. Make sure that your hair is arranged properly, whether male, female, or LGBTQ. Make sure that everyone is um, as presentable. You can wear smart casual clothes. It can be just the top, you don't have to wear pants, you can just be in your shorts. But as long as this here and up is presentable and you look smart, you look like an executive, you're going to exude executive presence, that's what's important. Next tip is to ready your resume, whether it be a printed copy or you can have it side by side on your screen. Just make sure that you have your resume ready. So if the interviewer has any questions regarding your resume, you can have it as your guide. Next thing that you have to ready is Ookla. Make sure that you have Ookla website ready on your screen because you are going to share your screen to the interviewer at the end of the interview to check on the internet speed that you currently have. You should also already ready in your screen the specs of your laptop or of your PC so that when you screen share, you already have everything ready for your interviewer. As I've mentioned, you will be doing screen sharing. So if you don't know how to do screen share through Google Meet or through Zoom, try and practice that already. Another important tip for your final interview, once your interviewer joins you in the room, make sure to greet your interviewer with a smile, show that you're confident. If you know your interviewer's name, greet that interviewer by name. You don't have to call them ma'am or sir. Greeting them by their name is a clear indication that you already are familiar with the American culture of not calling people by ma'am or sir. And you will also be already showing executive presence by greeting them through their name and greeting them with a smile. When answering questions, you always have to make sure that you modulate your voice properly. Some people might be introverts, but that doesn't mean that you cannot modulate or talk loudly. You can be an introvert but and still show confidence by changing the tone or the volume of your voice. 
when answering also questions, it is okay to take pause for a few seconds and think of the proper answers. You don't have to answer immediately, like in the split second you can give the answer. It is okay to take pause for one to two seconds. Of course, it will show your interviewer that you think before you answer. But for you to also be able to answer quickly and not take pause for too long, make sure to already ready your talking points, already ready skills that you know is valuable for a virtual executive assistant. So make sure that you already have that maybe on a screen or in a sheet of paper in a bullet point form so that you can still, of course, discuss it or you can talk about it in a more conversational way and not like scripted or guided. It is also very important to already take note of some sample scenarios of experiences that you had from your previous work or from school that you can discuss during the interview. We don't know what type of questions the interviewer will ask you, but definitely based on experience, they do ask some situational questions. So make sure that you prepared some stories from your previous work experience that you can share during the interview. When you're sharing situational answers or stories or experiences, make sure that you talk about it in detail. When I talk about in when I say talk about it in detail, it means that if you can remember the time of day, if you can remember the specific person, just make sure that you answer situational questions in a very detailed way and not in like a general way of answering questions. Another tip is to already recognize your weakness because a lot, if not 100% of interviewers always ask something about your weakness. But when you identify your weakness, make sure that you have turned that weakness into your strength. Don't just end the sentence that my weakness is I easily forget things. And then that's it. For example, whenever I am interviewed, I always tell them that my weakness is that I am forgetful, which is I am. You can ask anybody. I am a very forgetful person. So because I have identified that weakness whenever I talk to my client or whenever I talk to anyone and I am discussing important things, I always make sure that I write everything down. So now that I write everything down, Whenever people ask me or whenever my client asks me about our previous meeting, I can just go back to my notes and then I can tell them detailed, detailed things of what we talked about. And that's how I turned my weakness into my strength. Because since I love writing things down, I maybe forget it in my mind, but I can go back to my notes anytime and I have everything in detail. So make sure to already identify again your weakness, but make sure to also match it with the strength. Another sample scenario that might be asked of you is to maybe cite an example wherein you did something wrong and what did you do to make it right. So already ready a specific situation from your previous work or from school or within your family that you did something wrong and then what did you do or what steps did you take to turn that wrong into a right. Another characteristic or personality that an Athena interviewer is looking for in an applicant is executive presence. You have been hearing this for months and months and end that the feedback that they've been getting from their interviewer is that they lack executive presence. So how are you going to show executive presence? I am going to talk about that on a much more detailed um, vlog or video um, in the next coming weeks about executive presence because it, it encompasses so much. The simplest way to show executive presence is through your physical appearance. So make sure that you look 
um, you look ready for your interview. Another is your voice modulation. Make sure that you're very conversational. You have good communication skills. Sometimes you, you might stumble with your grammar and all of those things. I am not perfect in my English, but as long as you show confidence and you're very conversational, that will already show executive presence. Another way to be able to show executive presence is to highlight in your interview the leadership skills that you have shown throughout school or throughout your work experience. You don't have to be a manager, you don't have to be a leader from your previous work to be able to show executive presence. You can definitely highlight that you do have the leadership skills that will be able to maybe promote you to um, a, leader, a leadership position. Uh, does it, it doesn't mean that you're going to apply for a promotion in Athena. It's very important to show leadership skills when you want to show them that you do have executive presence characteristics. Another tip for a final interview is to always answer with a smile, be kind, be bubbly. Don't be overreacting with your um, explanation. Make sure that you take charge of the conversation. Make sure that you answer questions properly and you talk about yourself a lot. Remember, you just have 45 minutes, 30 minutes, less than an hour to be able to sell yourself. So make sure that when the interviewer asks you a question, try to answer it as detailed as possible. Even if it takes you a few sentences or a number of sentences to be able to answer it, just make sure that you have answered everything that you can in just a few questions so that your interviewer don't have doesn't have to like get the information from you. Make sure that when you answer questions, your interviewer will not have any follow up questions anymore so that's when that's what that's you can be talkative in that way another important tip that i have for you during the final interview is to make sure that the interviewer don't doesn't eat you alive make sure that you show your interviewer that you are in the same level that's ex that's very important also when when showing your executive presence don't cower or be afraid of your interviewer Make your interviewer feel that you are on the same level, that you are both executives, that you are both in, uh, you are both in the same standard. So make it's very important to show your interviewer that you are their equal. And lastly, for this general tips that I have when ending the interview, make sure to thank your interviewer for their time. Make sure that you remember their name, call them by their name and say, thank you, MJ, or thank you, Mia, for this time. It has been a great experience to be interviewed by you. I'm so looking forward to be part of Athena. It is also nice to maybe already ask feedback at the end of the interview. Now that we are done with the tips that I gave you, here are some questions or things that you can research on on your own to be able to help you prepare for your final interview. The first question would be, what is Athena's official website? Next question that you, you should research on is, what are Athena's official social media accounts? You have Facebook page, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube. They also have Glassdoor. You can include it there. So you can also read reviews. Next thing that you should research on is who is Athena's owner and co-founder. You also have to research on who is Athena's CEO. Another thing that you should research on would be who is Athena's very first virtual executive assistant. Another research that you should do is find out what is the meaning of delegation or what is a delegation industry. Last thing that you should research on is Athena's Facebook page videos. Make sure to watch all of the videos that they have there before you start your application process or the final interview. For more tips and sample questions for a final interview, you can join my Facebook group. I will link it in the caption down below so you'll find more tips in the guides of our Facebook group. 
once you're done with your final interview, you will again wait for 24 to 48 hours to receive feedback whether you pass the final interview or not. If you pass the final interview, you will be receiving an email inviting you to the job offer. Now, attend the job offer because they will explain to you all the benefits that you will be receiving. If you decide to accept the job offer, they will provide you with the start date for your training. That's it. That is the whole application process here in Athena Executive Assistant. So now that you know the qualifications and the application process itself to become a virtual executive assistant in Athena, let's go back to the screen and I'm going to discuss with you all of the benefits that you're going to get once you join us here in Athena. Now that you know the application process and you know the qualifications, well, I'm definitely sure you want to know what's in it for you or what are the benefits or of becoming an Athena executive assistant. First, of course, would be the salary. Now, compensation is 45000 fixed monthly salary paid on a weekly basis, which is every Wednesday, and it will be credited to your Payoneer account. Make sure to also have a local bank account. I highly, highly suggest to use Union Bank and link it to your Payoneer account. Next benefit after application process is you're going to have a three-week training through our Athena Academy and you will be receiving a 30,000 pesos training allowance. The 30,000 peso training allowance will be given to you in 5,000 peso increments every week in the next six weeks. Next benefit is this is a full-time remote work, meaning you just work from home and no commuting and you can definitely work anywhere in the Philippines. Next benefit is HMO or, or, or health card coverage and you will receive this after two weeks in the role with a maximum benefit limit of 200,000 peso per year for the Athena contractor, meaning for you as an EA. And you will also have one free dependent 30 days after ed eligibility in the rule and an option to add additional dependent, which you will be shouldering on your own and it will be deducted from your salary. Our health card covers pre-existing condition, which is amazing. Another benefit under our health card is sessions with psychologists. We also have optical benefits and medicine reimbursement. Please take note that medicine reimbursements are only applicable if the medicines are, you're going to buy the medicines if you are an inpatient or you are confined. You also have the pet support program, which most of us love. And you can hear it from the background. Our neighbors, dogs are very noisy. So the pet support program is you can reimburse your veterinary and medical expenses for your pets at 5,000 pesos, at a 5,000 peso limit quarterly. Next would be employee assistance program, wherein the Athena Athenians in our company will definitely assist you all throughout your work here as an EA. Next, so next benefit would be great rewards and recognition. This is what I love about Athena. They recognize all of our big or small. Well, actually, nothing is small for Athena. Everything that we do is being rewarded and recognized. And of course, we also have career and personal growth opportunities wherein you can apply for a higher position um, as an operations manager, a senior operations manager, an operations director. You can also apply for the training team, finance, marketing, recruitment or HR. Any department that is looking for a an applicant you can definitely apply so there are growth um, career go growth and personal growth within Athena so those are our benefits that I definitely love and I do hope to work with you soon and
And that's it. I know this video is long, but compared to the three hour video that people have been watching before through my Google Drive, this is going to be a breeze for you. I hope that you learned a lot about the Athena application process and learned a little bit about Athena, but I highly, highly encourage you to still do your research go to Athena's official social media accounts and do all the research that you need to do, learn about the position. And once you're ready, you can start applying by clicking the link in the caption down below. You can also use all the links in my bio and my social media accounts, my TikTok, Instagram, Facebook page, Facebook group, and of course here on YouTube as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this video. I will be posting more tutorials in the next coming weeks. So you better watch out. And I do, I do, I do, I do, I do promise to be regularly posting because I have been absent for so long. But yes, I promise to be regularly posting in the next coming weeks or in the next coming years um, for you to be able to learn more about being a virtual executive assistant, not just here in Athena, but being a freelancer or a virtual executive assistant in general. So please subscribe in my YouTube channel, follow me on all of my handles. Everything will be linked in the caption down below and have a great day, guys. Bye.